Okay, I'm going live now. The audio from the microphone is coming to a bit better. Um, I'm actually on as well, so I think it is. Um, at the moment, um, yeah, so sorry about the last couple of games with the audio. Okay, the the reverb from it, from get audio from it. So I was actually going through and just said, um, I'll try to keep on talking. So basically, the odds are, and this is how you can see there: a dollar eighty for Lakers and two dollars thirteen for the Kings. And I'm just going on the overall at the moment. I'll try and go on the wins and losses next time. Or oh, next week, they said, um, yeah, basically, I've got it as legit as I can. I think it should be really legit. Um, and let's watch it and see how it be. Like, it's basically just to get the Lakers as good as they should be and the Kings as good as they should be. Um, what I'm not doing properly is the defense. And... I think the other thing is just sometimes they don't have as many fouls as they should and stuff like that as well. So I'm just going with that at the moment. But um, you know, I have to work all this out eventually. Um, other things I was trying to say, like on the other ones I'm just going to repeat now, is basically that um, I'm going to have the retiring players, unlike Chris Bosch, maybe a dirt elixir for this season. I have them in the game, and um, I'm going to do that and have them at their peak, so uh, as like draft picks, and um, they'll be in the game as draft picks, and it won't be like Dirt the Witsy, it'll be Dirt Witsy Jr. So you know how there's Tim Harlow Jr., well this will be Dirt the Witsy Jr., and um, basically have it like that, and the other draft picks like with their value, overall value, which I'm, I'm going to edit the draft pass like the next season. So I'm going to do the draft and I'll know which players are actually the better players. And then I'll do the draft and then I'll make them the actual players for the next year. So basically you can't edit maybe the draft unless you do a draft pass until the next season and just write down who drafted them, what team it is, and like um, I used to do a edit the draft pass like in the playoffs, but so I think it's really good. Like you don't exactly know how good they're going to be, and um, I'm just working out on all the um, draft predictors, like the predictions of of like um, it's not maybe who first to, who picks first or where it's like how good they are. And or whatever, and I, I forget if it's a mock draft because it's actually a draft board or something. So it's not the mock draft, but a draft board. And um, like I try and get it kind of like all of them together. I try and get kind of who's better and who's worse. And so we could have Chris Bosch or or um, if he retires, like um, Dirk Nowitzki at another team legitimately but as a rookie so I'll make him younger and do that kind of we'll see that's for next season there's only three weeks of this season so I was going to get through pretty quickly every win's crucial then we're going to have a three game to the final series um, and if we have a lot of three game series go on to three games and I'll try and have it five games and just try and do that um, until um, until kind of um, it is like to be like maybe a seven game series is needed. But I said, um, yeah, and basically that's only like two more weeks how I've got it with the three games and then the seven game final series. But I said, I'll just have to see what happens. And it's just exciting and it gets a bit boring when it's 4 0, 4 0, 4 0, 4 0, kind of all the time. And usually the best thing to do is 4 1, kind of when they get a roll, some of the teams. I guess it's like that sometimes, a real thing, but, um, I'm just trying to do the best things and make it exciting. And um, anyway, on to this game, it should be legit. Um, they're all how I'm mate, having the rosters um, at the moment, and we'll just see what happens. The 2K Sports Pregame Show.
NBA regular season opener for a couple of teams. Thank you all for tuning in. So happy you're here. I just, I mean, I'm ecstatic that you're here. I miss and you I'm, too, And Ernie. I'm really happy that Kenny and Shaq are here, I too. I miss you too, Ernie. Thank yeah, you. me too. Tonight, it'll be the Sacramento Kings up against the Los Angeles Lakers. Looking at the Lakers, they split the season series against these guys last season, two games apiece. Should be a good one tonight. After a brisk offseason, it's finally upon us, fellas. What's that? Opening night. Welcome everybody to the day we've all been looking forward to. The start of a new NBA season on 2K Sports. I'm Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. From the sideline, our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Battle in the Western Conference, the Sacramento crowd hoping to watch their Kings come out on top. And of course, this is the first they're seeing of the Lakers. This team matched up so well during the regular season last year, splitting their four games. This should be a terrific battle. And two teams here that were evenly matched a season ago as they split the season series. Yeah, they'd settle for 500 against most teams. Both squads win, challenge, perhaps a way to put it. But one of them has got to win tonight. And nothing tips off a broadcast like getting the lowdown from the sidelines. And we've got David Aldridge there for that. David, good evening. Well, guys, Isaiah Thomas may be small in size, but he's always dreamed big. He said, it sounds crazy, but I always thought I was going to be an NBA player, that I'd be an all-star and one of the best to play. That was in my head since I was a little boy, before I loved anything, before I knew what love was. I love the game of basketball. Kevin? Great to hear that, DA. Thank you. Thomas plays with real passion. You can tell he loves playing the game. Here we are, Clark, opening night. It's officially upon us. I, I know you think it's important to get off to a good start, don't you? I really do, Kevin. It's better than getting off to a poor start. Because the season is so long, you've got time to overcome either one. But it's always best to get off to a nice start. It gives you confidence and gives you momentum that you can build on. All right, ready to go? Ready to go? It'll be Los Angeles. Um, yeah, just quickly, um, um, yeah, I'm going to do a roster and um, do that. I've already got two slider ones, and one of them I'm using at the moment. So it's Neon Seven Six One is a username on Xbox One, and I've got like an, two on the top. 25 or 30 or something like that in the world for sliders and I'm thinking the only one that's got two like I'm not the top one but I've got two in there um, one's more like NBA Live uh, older NBA Live one if you play it just like without doing stuff to rosters then it kind of works alright and just the shooting players kind of need to be better um, and just a bit of rostering um, with actually um, the other one, if you do all the roster, then it plays properly. And maybe that's the one I'm using because I'm doing the roster, so you have to work out which one's which. If you want to use that, go on to the game. Off the tip. Here are the starters for Los Angeles. Caldwell Pope is the two with Ingram playing small forward. Randall is the four with Lopez in the middle. And it's Thomas in the point. Doesn't have the fastest release. Randall has to hit that one with the hand in his face. Thomas against Fox. Randolph a screen on Thomas. Just five on the clock. And out of bounds as Los Angeles gains possession. And, you know, that pass wasn't deflected or anything, Kevin. Don't see that often. An unfortunate, unforced turnover. Caldwell Pope outside. Lopez kicks. Just, 
I'm just kind of updating a new on what I've actually done. So, is that Randolph in the game is my modified one. The Labus here for the Kings is my modified one as well. The Death on Foxes as well. Um, Brook Lapis, I've adjusted the three point percentage or three point three pointers. Lonzo Ball, the same thing. And Corval Pope, the same thing. A Lyle Ding is my one, like adjusted. And I zoom back is as well. So hopefully get all kind of good field goal percentage with this. And like it's just one or two. Um, like shots out and not zero percent and um, what was the other thing I wanted to have kind of so uh, I forgot at the moment I'll try and just say in two minutes and then we'll get on to Thomas feeds to Ingram from the stripe like at six no good off the back of the rim the shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. Now, here's Bogdanovich. Randolph sends a screen for heel. Down low, Holly Stein. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. Yeah, that's a good way to start the game. Nice inside bucket right there. And there's the pass to Randall. First quarter of play with about a minute and a half gone. Misses in close. And you can see the defenders afraid to kind of get in his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the basket. But on that one, they were there. And Caldwell Pope gets the basket. And we're seeing a little more of this from KCP. Working that in-between area, trying to improve his efficiency. Now, here's Fox. Healed with it. He's picked up by Lopez. Off the pick. Healed with the bucket. Working the in-between area, the kind of look that can get you into a rhythm early. Yeah, and I think all credit goes to that being just good offense. I mean, those are the kind of shots they want, and they got it. And the rejection by Coley Stein. Here's Fox, and it's Fox with the jam. Yeah, I love how Fox uses that wiry frame of his. He's eel-like in his ability to get to spots he wants to get to. He's always under control despite playing at a high rate of speed. Out of hand on it. And now the Kings fast break. The 11-footer makes a big height bounce and goes in. Lights out here right out of the gate. Perfect 4-4 from the floor. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now they need a basket. Now, here's Caldwell Pope. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up, and two shots coming up. And one of the more surprising moves this past offseason was when the Pistons let KCP go. Two sides couldn't see eye to eye on a contract, and eventually they let him be an unrestricted free agent. Lakers shooting their first free throws of the game on this trip to the line. Gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. The first free throw is good. And Greg Caldwell Pope ultimately ends up on the Los Angeles Lakers. Strange to see such a talented player get renounced by his old team, the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, you, you just don't see that very often. And after the Bradley trade, the Pistons seemed ready to move on. Uh, lucky for the Lakers to pick up a player like Caldwell Pope so late in free agency. And he can't hit the second. And you, you really got to be in awe. That's the way that Contavious Caldwell Pope plays defense. So disciplined in this era of three-point shooting to kind of stay home on fakes and, and playing great position defense. He just sticks to his man like glue. Heel dishes to Randolph. He was all alone on that one. Easy little jumper for him right there, guys. Lakers trail. Yeah, so basically I've got GMs, we're doing CPU mode, but I've got GMs and I've got all the rules for that. Try and do like draft day kind of the movie. And um, basically we're doing that and all the rules we've got. And you're seeing like what is going on with what the GMs have done. 
Um, and um, oh, and the other thing was with um with our the free agency, I'm trying to get all of them to go for it. Um, whoever's going for it, and the fourth best one is going with their offers is going to get the actual first pick of the actual free agent when it goes to free agency and not the top one. So for I did Steph Curry in the off season, but like doing the off season before the actual season. But said that is in one I've just done and not this one. And Steph Curry actually went to Chicago and like there was like other ones kind of like Houston maybe or something like that, I forget, or San Antonio, who were top ones, but he was a fourth one. I got rid of their um, bids and just got him to go to Chicago in that. And the other one was Washington for Kevin Durant, and it was like Golden State trying to rebid in the free agency. I got rid of them, and there was other ones as well. But there is actually going to be auto, auto free agent signing. So I was going to do auto re free agent signing, so not all of them, if they're in a successful team, should really go on the free agency. And um, yeah, so it's basically like my GM mode for my league with a lot of GMs. Okay, so this is as long as you know. By five. Thomas kicks to Randall. Over Randolph. He clangs that one off the back iron, and down it falls. Randall's got his second bucket. Now a Caldwell Pope, but it's not like he's playing defense on just anyone. Greg usually draws the opposing team's top score as his nightly assignment. Yeah, and he's earned that responsibility because of his play. I mean, typically plays a ton of minutes and, and never slows down during the game. All around fantastic defensively. Fox with the steal. Bogdanovich against Thomas. Yep, that one goes. And how about the start they've gotten off to? They haven't missed once. For Los Angeles, they've gotten three of eight shots to fall for them here in the first quarter. Shoots from the baseline. Nice spin off the left rim and in. Thomas got his first points of the game. Oh, great awareness. No reason to take it inside there against the taller man. Yeah, he knew he had him beat, Greg. I mean, that was clear. Took advantage of the space he had and then calmly and quietly drained it from the mid-range. That's good basketball. Now here's Heald. Makes it off the glass. Heald's got his second bucket of the night. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they shot the basketball. Very high percentage so far. And if you want to start a game hot, that's the way to do it. Coldwell Pope with it, covered by Heal. Now Coldwell Pope. Coley Stein grabs the ball. Now here's Fox. Outside Bogdanovich. There's the dish to Fox. Randolph sets a screen for Fox. Pass to Cauley Stock. No good that time, so Los Angeles will take it the other way. Thomas against Fox. In the corner, it's Ingram. And stolen by Bogdanovich. To the middle. Here's Colin Stein, and he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. And one of the side effects of the Cousins trade was it did open up more playing time for Willie Colley Stein. I mean, immediately he was able to step in and, and fill those minutes and became a much larger part of their offense. And that one misses. Hey, Greg, when Carly Stein got those extra minutes after the Cousins deal, you could see a change in his play. Uh, much more aggressive, much more confident. Yeah, you know, sometimes it just takes a clear path to minutes to change a player. Carly Stein had been getting better and better before the trade. 
having the team believe he could step in was a huge boost in his confidence and his play. Good on the second free throw. And the NBA has had coaches who are as legendary as any player. With that in mind, Clark, who is your pick as the greatest coach of all time? Man, I can't even begin to have an answer for that one. There's some guys that jump out, though, when you think about that list, who would be on it. Greg Popovich, for sure. Um, Phil Jackson would have to be included on that list. Fred Arbach. Chuck Daly for the way he was able to manage his players. Um, Pat Riley. You'd have to consider him as part of uh, being on somebody worthy of that list as well. And I'll even go back a little farther and throw Lenny Wilkins in the mix. I thought he was really good with a number of different teams that he coached. Here's Ball. After the basket by Willie Cauley-Stein. Kicks it to Ball. Here's the screen. Lopez, a screen on Fox. Five on the clock. Lopez, a screen. Here's Ball. A second chance effort, and it's Lopez laying it in. Lopez has got his first two points of the night. Hey, Brooke Lopez getting after it. He is one of the better offensive rebounders in the game. Randolph up top. He's defended by Randall. Bogdanovich passes to Randall. Over Randall. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Oh, they call it old school. That's what it is when you watch Zach Randolph play the game of basketball. He's got such great skill and touch around the basket. We call it the old man game. And I tell you what, he gets it done every night. And he makes the first. And you know, as you've said, Greg, all the time, Zach Randolph can roll out of bed and get you 20. <laughs> I mean, he's just a natural scorer. He can post up. He can face up. And he just stays with it. An excellent offensive rebounder. This guy just has that nuance to his game that's made him so effective. So he picks up just one from the line that time. Randolph was an Indiana State champion coming out of high school, so you know the pressure of the NBA doesn't bother him. There's nothing more intense than that when you talk about that Indiana high school tournament. And now we'll get a perspective here on the hustle game, how it's been going for Sacramento. They've come out in attack mode on the defensive end. They've applied pressure and forcing turnovers. Something else they've done right so far from the get-go tonight is, is run. I mean, so much of their offense has come off the fast break. Free throw drops for Heal. And Buddy Heal, the centerpiece of the DeMarcus Cousins trade. Talk about what makes him, Greg, so intriguing. Well, the, the Wooden Award winner in his senior season, he, he led Oklahoma to the Final Four. And how about leading the nation in three-pointers made? I think that can translate to the NBA level and could make him a difference maker. That one falls, so he hits both of them. And well, last season for the Kings, they were in the hunt for a good stretch there early on, but kind of fell out of playoff contention and finally decided to pull the trigger and trade DeMarcus Cousins. It marked a major direction change that this team, I think, wanted to make. Sacramento with the ball. Following the miss by Lonzo Ball. Here's Farrell. Carter up top. And the lead now, double digits on that bucket. Carter's got his first basket. And the Cousins deal, Greg, has really been examined. But what is clear is that the Kings wanted to get younger and start rebuilding. And you can argue if the trade was the right move or not, but management felt it was. The team's thinking was they wanted to change the atmosphere of the locker room. Fully committed to bringing in youth and doing things 
from the ground up. So timeout called here, the first for Los Angeles. Yeah, you, you can sense he wasn't happy with how things are going here. Probably looking to change it up a bit. Nothing wrong with that. You got to be flexible. When something isn't working, you adjust, you modify, you go to something else. That's what the best coaches do. While we've got this moment here, now let's take a look at last season's leaders in converting turnovers into points. The Lakers in fifth. And this team, in terms of scoring off of turnovers, that, that became the identity. I mean, they really look to disrupt and cause problems defensively. And boy, do they take advantage on the other end. Now, here's Ball. Dishes it to Dang. Here's Kuzma. And it's Sacramento with the rebound. On the wing, heel. Six points for him. There's the screen. Farrell kicks to LaVissier. He got an advantage there off the pick and took it right in. And the Kings lead by 12. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. And here's Fry from the arc. It's rebounded by Farrell. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. They came focused and ready to play. I mean, they're doing everything they can to um, put things in their favor. You earn that, and they're actually earning it well right now. And the Lakers have possession. Sacramento able to drain the three. Here's Kuzma. <laughs> And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. Clark, when you played, did you have any superstitions or a, or a game day ritual that you would follow? Superstitions are a waste of time in my book, Kevin. I had none, not any. I liked my pregame nap. Gentlemen, I'd get a good shots. pregame meal. And then it was about focusing on my assignment for that particular game and night or day. Superstitions, I know a lot of guys have them. They weren't part of my toolkit. And he makes the first. Second free throw, no good. And the Lakers, Greg, for a long time, could rely on the lure of Los Angeles to draw top free agents. History does a lot, it seems. Yeah, Paul George listing them on his short list shows they still have that pull, but the Lakers will be big players in free agency, I believe, in the near future. Now here's Heald. He has six. Rebounded by Hart. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D, just enough to keep him out of rhythm. 109 left here in the first quarter. Sacramento leading by 12. Here's Farrell, the feed to Carter. Inside, a nice shot by Kufus. Kufus has got his first bucket of the night. Starting to surge here, and we're only in the first quarter. 
Yeah, and they've come out strong. I mean, clearly, they've been the better team so far. Now, here's Ball. Then kicks to Fry. Over Koopas. No good from Fry. You're not going to see that very often. Plenty of space, but he just, let's face it, he whiffs on that one. Here's Farrell. Labissier, the screen. Floats one. Farrell gets the bucket. Farrell's got five points so far. They are just killing them on the interior. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. You got to play with some physicality in the paint. Passes it to Ball. Beyond the arc. No good on the shot. And so it's Sacramento with a sizable lead as the quarter wraps up. They're ahead, 16 points. They've got their field goal percentage to thank for that. They've been hot from all over the floor tonight. Right back after this break. Exactly a close game so far, but as the second quarter starts here, plenty of time for a comeback. And quite a position here for the Kings to be in. What do you guys think? I mean, a huge lead, and already after this first quarter, they're starting to make it look easy. Yeah, like an avalanche, Greg, overpowering the defense on a majority of their possessions. Here's Farrell, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups, courtesy of Gatorade, as the second quarter gets going. On the court for Sacramento. Heald is the two with Carter at the three. Coop is out there with LeBissier. And it's Farrell in at the point. So it's the Lakers now. Sacramento making their last shot. Ball kicks to Dang. He feeds it to Ball. Nice ball movement here by the Lakers. Kuzma, that's good. And when Ball has the ball, it's in good hands. He can run the offense, no doubt. Pass to Heald. He dishes it to Carter. Labissiere, the screen. Off the screen. Ball with the rebound. You must make that one. Even with the defense present, these are shots you have to finish. Nice job exploiting that mismatch. Realized he had a smaller defender on him and went right to the mid-range J. Here's Farrell following the bucket by the Lakers. Carter kicks to heel. Back to Carter. The pass to Farrell. Lock at six. Sacramento needs to get off a shot. Got a piece of it, but they recover it. Heald kicks to Labissier. And now approaching two minutes of action here in the second quarter. To the right side. Labissier, the screen. Here's Farrell. And he connects on the jumper. The screen did the trick. Farrell's got his third basket of the night. That was an outstanding pick that gave him the room to bury the jump shot. Underrated, but not undervalued. Pass to Kuzma. And he's fouled on the shot. One free throw coming up. How about that move? Is this guy special or what? Just love watching him operate inside. For Los Angeles, they have made two and missed two at the line tonight. And they were 75% from the line a season ago. Fox, he's checked in for Sacramento. The Lakers also making some changes. Zubats is checked in for Dang. And Thomas subbed in for Hart. One shot. Well, 
Clark, you've been in the booth for so long, but I have to ask, have you ever toyed with the idea of coaching or working in some team's front office? I know you did briefly for the Pacers. Yeah, I did, and I enjoyed it. I was working in player relations, um, player development with our guys off the court and loved it, but it just wasn't something I could sustain at this season in my life. Not interested in coaching. I've never really been because my career path went towards broadcasting right after I got done playing, and I've paid my dues and have grown in this profession, and I would want to do the same thing in coaching, and I just don't have enough time in front of me to do that. So I'm happy to be around the game in this capacity. Coaching never lets up. I get an off season as a broadcaster. Yes. Well, the Lakers last season, the worst defensive team in the NBA. Again, offense was a little bit better. Uh, Clark, what's the key for them offensively? Well, I think a couple of things. One, ball movement, utilizing everybody. Last season, they were bottom five in assists, top five in turnovers. And that ratio, those numbers, not conducive to good offense. Sacramento making a switch here. Bogdanovich is checked in. And the Lakers also making a switch. Randall's checked in for Channing Fry. To the left side wing. Ball, the pass to Zubats. He kicks it to Ball. Baseline J on the way. Kufus grabs the miss. Kufus has got three rebounds now in this one. Outside, Bogdanovich. Fox against Thomas. Fox kicks to Bogdanovich. Another three for Sacramento. Fox is a willing passer, always looking to find his teammates. Lakers trail by 17. Thomas with the ball. There's a screen. And that one is off. Now Sacramento takes it the other way. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Yeah, double digit advantage on the scoreboard. Uh, they've taken the initiative. They've played, I think, with more purpose so far. The Lakers have gone three of their first five shots to drop here in the second quarter. Feeds it to Ball. Passes to Kuzma, shoots off the screen. It's rebounded by Labissiere. Labissiere's got his third rebound tonight. Farrell. Here's Bogdanovich. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time. without a bucket. Thomas down low. Started by Fox. I um, mean, yeah, sorry, I didn't press the mic button. So I'm just going to this. So basically, I had a quick look at the Lakers. Like, 
Once that ball's not going as good, he's still hitting his threes. He actually only shot his hit as the threes. I improved the threes. Isaiah Thomas is only one of five. He should be better. He'll start shooting soon. But it's not actually that. They're kind of right, realistic. Kind of. They're 69% like Sacramento Kings from the field. And you see all that, it's like really good, but I have to start missing some shots soon, I think. So I'm just analyzing it. Skills? Superb. Greg, you asked a lot of GMs. De'Aaron Fox, probably the fastest player in this year's rookie class. And he, he plays at one speed. That's lightning. I mean, he's got speed to burn. And maybe not quite as fast as, say, John Wall, but he isn't far behind. He uses that quickness well also in terms of just busting seams on the offense. And at the other end, he can be an outstanding defender as he was at Kentucky. He misses the free throw. Boy, I like the focus and unselfishness Fox brings to the court. A strong defender with lightning quick reflexes in every spot. Carly Stein, he's checked in for Sacramento. Randolph comes in for Labisier. Brandon Ingram, he's checked in for Los Angeles. Contavious Caldwell Pope comes in for Ball. And he misses the second one as well, so he is 0 for 2 that time. And you look at this Kings roster, and Greg, you can see the youth movement is in full effect. Yeah, and Buddy Hill headlines the group as he comes over in that Cousins trade. Scal Labissieri and, and Willie Cauley Stein, also a big part of this team's future. And then getting Fox as a rookie to kind of run the ship, another great building block. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Roof shots. The first one falls. And the Kings, for so long, had not been active in free agency. You, you have to like the moves this organization has made to bring in some vets in the offseason. Randolph and Hill bring a lot of experience and leadership to the locker room. And good on the second, so he makes them both. And Greg, the Kings wanted to have veteran leaders, and that's what they've got right now. And, and the Kings are in a, a rebuild mode, and you need vets to lead that process. Show the youngsters the right way to do things, and I think the Kings have started to make some very savvy moves here as they begin this rebuild. Here's Thomas. Sacramento able to drain the three. Thomas a screen. Zubat kicks to Thomas. And no good. And Sacramento will go the other way with it. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. And it's been a well-rounded performance. I mean, strong rebounding has certainly been, at, been at, the, at the center of it, but it's been good on a number of levels. The Kings have missed four of their eight free throws up to this point. Things not really going their way at the line yet. Yeah, a year ago, though, Kevin, 78% conversion rate from the free throw line. So that's a nice all-around effort. That free throw, no good. And the Lakers, Greg, have acquired some intriguing young talent. Do you see this group blossoming into elite status? I mean, there's still some question marks. Injuries ha have been an issue. Uh, I do see some all-star potential for some of their young fellas. Superstar potential, though, mm, tougher to say. They've got something to build on, though, and that's key. And he's good on the second. And the Kings struggled last season, Greg. They did so because they just couldn't get stops in the defensive end. And defense something that this team will struggle with at times. A lot of it is they don't protect the rim or close out, particularly on that three-point shot. And so much of defense just boils down to challenging shooters whenever you can. It's about giving more effort on that side of the ball. Yeah, and the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they've got to talk about. Absolutely, Greg. I mean, they're getting crushed, killed 
hammered, pulverized in the boat. And a look now at the four areas where shots can come from. The paint, mid-range, and shots from deep all broken down for the Lakers. And they've been avoiding those deep threes. They're capable of knocking those shots down from long range, but so far they, they've really been reluctant to let it fly from that free throw line extended three-point shot. There it is, his second make of the game. He's missed five. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. Now, here's Fox. Randolph sets a screen for Fox. Outside for Randolph. Outside Bogdanovich. Lock at six. Farrell for three. Kept alive by Sacramento. Second shot opportunity, and he tries off the glass, but it's no good. Now here's Ingram. Tight defense on him. Picked by Randall. Fox against Caldwell Pope. Here's Ingram. Ready by Bogdanovich. And a big lead for them on both the scoreboard and the backboard thus far. Yeah, rebounding has been a big key in this one, Greg. They've asserted their will and have taken control on the glass. And for a power forward, he can sure get up. I mean, because of that leaping ability, it kind of offsets his height disadvantage. And then Randall slams it in. Ever on the attack. That's just Randall's mindset. And the replay presented, of course, by Under Armour. Unleash chaos. Great stuff and some great basketball going on. And here comes Thomas, leading the fast break. It's good. Thomas got six points. And there's that transition offense. Push the ball up the floor. The defense can't get set, and you can get some easy baskets here. Now, here's Fox. Outside, Randolph. Farrell for three. The rebound by the Lakers. Randall's got his third rebound tonight. Outside for Caldwell Pope. Good, and the assist goes to Thomas. Eight points for Contavious Caldwell Pope. And the three-pointer, a big part of KCP's game. About half his shots come from out there. Randolph against Randall. Farrell for three. And it's Ingram with the rebound. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. Caldwell Pope with a wide-open look. And another three for the Lakers. And started hot, and he's only gotten harder. Fox kicks to Farrell. Sacramento moving it around. Bogdanovich with it, now guarded by Ingram. Nice work there, coming off the screen. And the Kings lead by 11. Yeah, I like it, I like it. Fox continues to get better from the mid-range, just the way he wants to. Thomas kicks to Zubac. Dish now to Randall. And it's Sacramento with the rebound. Earlier in the game, they had a 19-point lead. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. The Kings have made five of ten free-throw attempts. A lot of misses. And the first one at the line is good. 
Carter, he's checked in for Farrell. And then for Los Angeles, Lopez, he's checked in for Zubats. And it's Dang in for Randall. And so he hits both. And for the Lakers, a big boost to their franchise fortunes this summer. They not only stay in the top three, but move up a spot and able to draft hometown kid Lonzo Ball. And you know, the Lakers drafting second in the lottery for the third straight year, Kevin. You got to cash in on those picks eventually. And Ball, I think, has the chance to be really an outstanding player. Maybe the best of all their young players, although Brandon Ingram. I think has a tremendous ceiling. The comparisons to Jason Kidd with ball, I understand those and don't disagree with them. He can potentially be uh, the kind of franchise point guard you build around. And here's Caldwell Pope. He's got 11. Dang attacking. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. It's going to go on to Aaron Fox. And Dang brings a lot to the table. I mean, a terrific defender, and he's... First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Take a break, take a break. Two shots. That's good from Dang. And getting to the line and hitting your free throws, a, a good way to get back into the game. It stops the clock and extends the game and allows you the opportunity to set your defense. They've been perfect from the line so far here in the second quarter. On a heel, he's checked in for Bogdanovich. The Lakers also changing it up. Fry comes in for Ingram. And Hart subbed in for Kentavious Caldwell Pope. And so he hits both. And the Lakers breathe a sigh of relief this summer, retaining their lottery pick that had a greater than 50-50 chance of falling to the 76ers. And you know what, Kevin? That's a huge boost for the franchise, drafting Lonzo Ball. They kept their pick. That means they will lose their 2018 pick. No upside to losing games this season. They're going all in. As the game has gone along, they've gotten more and more aggressive on the backboard. Well, it's paid off with a greater rate of second chance hoops. I mean, great effort to build this lead on their part. And the basket by Thomas. Yeah, those are starting to add up, guys. Of their last five baskets, three have been triples. Fox against Thomas. Now, here's Fox. Defense is right there. Carly Stein with the screen for heel. Carter for three. Drills it from outside. Carter's got five. Uh, okay, we got a nice little back and forth going here. Yeah, and I like it. I love seeing that. It's a lot of fun when that happens. These teams are going at each other from the outside. Now, here's Thomas. Nine points in the game so far. And the rejection by Coley Stein. Tell you what, Kevin, it would be helpful if he would start to contribute a little more on offense because when he's missing, it makes it really hard for this team. Here's Hart. And it is flushed down with a nice jam. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered, huh? Some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Tell you what, fellas, that could give them the energy boost they've been looking for. Six-second difference between the shot and game clock. Cauley Stein with a screen on Dang. The 11-footer. Nice D from Dang. 
pass to Hart, overhealed, and with that shot, the Sacramento lead is cut to just 11 on the basket from Hart. Oh, a really nice job to take what the defense was giving him there. And so it's the Sacramento Kings. Their lead at 11 points to end the quarter. They're pounding the ball inside, and that's where they've gotten their best production tonight. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks. Here with Coach Yeager. Coach, how do you keep control of this game going forward? Well, we can keep them out of the paint. You can't play like you're up four touchdowns. Try to guard the basketball. They put their heads down. You can't be uh, unaggressive. You've got to be aggressive. Coach, we'll see if you can keep up that defensive intensity. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half momentarily. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. And hello again. We have an exhilarated home crowd joining us for our halftime report. I'm Ernie Johnson alongside Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaq. It's Sacramento with the advantage at the half. They lead by 11. Shaq, how do you think Sacramento played? Well, they're getting higher percentage looks, good game planning, the ball is moving around. Guys aren't pulling the trigger at the first thing they see. They are definitely staying disciplined. That's a big part of what has them having the lead at the halftime. And Kenny, let's get your thoughts on the Lakers. Well, obviously, they didn't show up on the glass at all. They were getting outworked, out-hustled, and outplayed. And their competition showed just the opposite. They wanted it more. You can't give up a ton of extra possessions in a game like this and expect to win. That's it for halftime. Glad you could join us as now we send you back to the action for the start of the third quarter. Getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. Sacramento leading by 11. Starting off the second half, here's Luke Walton's five. The lengthy pair of KCP and Ingram on the wing. Randall is the four with Lopez in the middle. And it's Thomas in the point guard. Now here's Heald. Just five to shoot. Crawley Stein kicks to Bogdanovich. Shoots over Ingram. Up again. It's good on the putback. And the Kings lead by 13. Just in a perfect position to grab that rebound and then get the putback. Thomas kicks to Lopez. Back to Thomas. Lopez sets a screen for Thomas. And the rejection by Coley Stein. Now here's Heald. He's guarded by Caldwell Pope. Heald dishes to Coley Stein. Bogdanovich passes to Coley Stein. Yeah, I mean, maybe could have tried for a more memorable dunk than that one. And we know he's capable of those memorable ones. Hey, they've got a nice, comfortable lead here, fellas. Might as well keep it simple. Do it a plain, simple one-hander, just like pound cake. <laughs> I would agree. Here's Thomas. He gets that one to drop. He's now 5 of 12. And it's all about the release when you shoot the floater. And Isaiah Thomas, the 16th and final pick of the 2011 draft. Uh, Greg, he definitely plays with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, I call it the little man syndrome. <laughs> he's driven to prove himself. I mean, he's overcome the odds. In, in league history, only nine players, 5'9 or shorter, have played 1,000 minutes or more in a season. And he's not just playing, he's playing at the highest level. Lakers trail by 13. Kicks to Lopez. Back to Thomas. Lopez a screen. Now here's Ingram. He's covered closely. No good from 11 feet. Sacramento's gone 4 of 8 tonight from three-point land, shooting 50% on the free ball here. He had stolen by Randall. Caldwell Pope. Oh! Oh, yeah. wow! Are you kidding? Oh my goodness. 
And you see the quickness of KCP bursting to the rim. That was a terrific replay brought to you by Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. Now, here's Fox. Randolph a screen. Fox kicks to Cauley Stein. And it's sent back by Lopez. Big Brook Lopez gobbling up space and getting the block on that play. Dishes to Thomas. Shot clock at six. Here's the three. They get it back. Off the mark, had a chance to trim it to single digits. Pat Donovich wide open. Good on the three-point shot. Timeout. Bogdanovich has got 12 in the game. Well, I tell you what, he's putting together quite a game here, knocking down shots and building upon this lead. Los Angeles calls timeout, and Lakers head coach Luke Walton got his start as an NBA coach in Golden State as a top assistant. He said, looking back, he would have paid to coach under Steve Kerr with everything he's learned. Wow, that's a high compliment from Walt. Kerr and Walt have very similar personalities, too. I mean, both are pretty even-keeled, low-key kind of guys. And when Kerr's back surgery sidelined him, Walt led the Warriors to the best start in NBA history. Pretty amazing. Sacramento making some changes. Kufis comes in for Cauley Stein. And Labissiere subbed in for Zach Randolph. Balls checked in for the Lakers. Now, here's Ball. Caldwell Pope kicks to Lopez. Tries from 16. Los Angeles with another miss. And listen, sometimes even the best of us are going to miss the easiest of opportunities. Bogdanovich dishes to Fox. Here's Kufus from 13 feet. It goes down. Kufus has got his third basket of the night. Really sweet passing from Fox. He's a reliable floor general and has great vision on the court. The feed to Randall. Over Labissier. Count that one, and the Kings lead has been cut back down to 14 on those points from Randall. Now that was pretty. A beautiful move to set up that jump shot. Now Fox. Kufus the pass to heel. Now here's Fox. Not a lot of room. Labissier with the screen for Fox. And out of bounds as Los Angeles gains possession. Looking now at some numbers for Ingram. Last season's performance for him averaged about nine points per game. Four rebounds and two assists. And really for him, it's about putting in the work and improving his game. Yeah, and I think he wants to. It's one of those things where you either want it or you don't, and he does. There's the pass to Ball. Picked by Randall. Lopez, a screen on Fox. Ball kicks to Randall. He feeds it to Lopez. Sacramento grabs the miss. Labissier's got his fifth rebound in this one. And some very quick points for him on that possession. And that's now six points for De'Aaron Fox. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Randall kicks to Lopez. Here's the screen. Now, here's Ball. Guarded by Fox. Beyond the arc. Ball, no good. Boy, he has been cold for a while now. Yeah, he has been, and he's got to find his stroke because he's holding back his team as a result of his poor shooting. Now, here's Heald. He's got six. 
And Bogdanovich kicks to Fox. Labissiere, the screen, goes up on the wing. The Lakers with the rebound. Randall's got rebound number five here tonight. Ball kicks to Caldwell Pope. He dishes it to Ingram. Pass to Ball. Lopez, a screen on Fox. Here's Ball. That's short off the rim. And another miss. Ooh, he's having a really ugly game. Yeah, about as ugly as you can have. You're right. Now here's LeBissier. Here's Fox. And oh boy, a lot of contact there. But he gets the call and will shoot two. And last season, one of the first where a coach was not let go during the regular season. Rarity Clark in the NBA. Do you think coaches get too much of the blame at times? Yeah, I would agree with that, Kevin. It's a great responsibility and challenge to coach in the NBA, but more times than not, they do sometimes get a, an unfair share of the blame for what happens on the court. Two shots. And he makes the first. Vince Carter, he's checked in for Sacramento. Yogi Ferro comes in for healed. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. Lakers trail by 18. Ball, the pass to Zubats. Here's Hart. He's got eight. They set the pick. Five to shoot. From downtown, Kufis grabs the miss. Kufis has got his fifth rebound in this one. Here's Farrell. He's got 11. Carter issued to Fox. Labissiere, the screen, pulls from the top of the key. The shot misses, and the Lakers will go the other way with it. Well, uh, you know, they're in the lead, but he's still been frustrated from an offensive standpoint. Hey, he just threw that possession away. Hopefully he learns from that and doesn't make the same mistake again. And so here's Sacramento. Their defense has only allowed six points in the second half. Farrell kicks to Kufis, and there's a nice one-handed slam. And guys, he's not an easy man to stop when he's got the rim in his sights. Never has been, never will be. He is a determined finisher. And guys, I like the fact that he chose the one-hand tomahawk slam because you get a little higher when you go off one hand and one foot. And here is Los Angeles now. Sacramento making their last shot. Looking to end the drought. Hart, that's good. Hart's got 11 points. You know what, guys? He can really light it up from the perimeter at times. Fox kicks to Kufis. Here's Farrell. Back to Kufis. Over Fry. From the top of the key. Kuzma pulls it in. Lakers trail by 17. Inside, Zubats, the rim-rattling two-handed jam. And way to finish and cut into that lead a little bit. Yeah, but look at the, ba the basket guy still shaking. Well, I tell you what, he loaded up as much power as he could behind that two-hander. Got a piece of it. And here's the fast break. Paul leading the way. <laughs> And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. And breaking down some numbers here, the hustle stats for Sacramento. Their defense has been outstanding, closing out on shots and blocking a few as well. They've repeatedly gotten out on the break tonight as well and scored a lot of baskets in transition. Shooting two, gentlemen. 
First free throw is good. So he hits one of two from the strike. Sacramento leading by 14. Here we go, one on one. It's stolen. Here's Hart, 11 points in the game. And here's Fry for three. It's rebounded by Farrell. Farrell's got his third rebound tonight. He kicks to LeBissier. There's a good screen. Zach Randolph's checked in for Sacramento. We've got 155 left to play in the third. Now, here's Fox, guarded closely. And once again, off the mark by Sacramento. Lakers trail by 14. Kuzma passes the ball. Sacramento grabs the miss. Kufis has got six rebounds here tonight. He's been anything but his usual self this quarter. It's actually been ugly to see. Picked by Randolph. Here's Farrell. Rebounded by the Lakers. Um, the defense was less than impressive there, but despite them not really contesting that shot, he still bricked it. Zubats, that's good. Good job putting the pass in front of him, throwing it where he's supposed to be, not where he is, paving the way right to the bucket. Now, here's Fox. He's covered closely. Randolph inside. Parked down low that time, and he got the three-second call. All right, a chance to look at the stats here for Farrell. How he did last season. Last season put up about 10 points a game. Three assists and two rebounds. And you look at those numbers, not bad. But guys, I think he can do better, and he knows it. And he has high expectations for himself as well, guys, but he just hasn't delivered fully on his potential yet. Kings leading now by... Twelve. Fox with it, now guarded by Ball. There's a screen. Now, here's Fox, guarded by Fry. I'm just trying to get, um, Ball to get the points he should, and so it should be about six points or something like that. So I'm not sure who he's playing at the moment, but I'm just trying to play a bit and get me playing and get Ball to get the points on his should, and then I'll actually do the, um, um, his two-pointers after this because it's not good enough. Clock. They need this one. Randolph can't hit. Laker. First trail by 12. And it's ball in the corner. And with that one, the lead is trimmed to single digits. Ball's got six points. Yeah, you know, it's a quirky release. There's no denying that. But he's a reliable shooter and scorer from the perimeter. Lonzo Ball making it happen. And so it's Sacramento. Ahead by nine as the quarter comes to a close. They're feeling very confident shooting the ball with great efficiency and dictating the pace. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
And now let's hear what head coach Dave Yeager was reviewing with his team. Stay aggressive, keep them moving. Don't let them stand and get set up and scheme up. And that's Dave Yeager laying out the key points for his team over this next stretch. Yeah, I mean, he really wants the ball and his guys to remain in constant... motion keep the defense on defense three quarters in the books folks glad to have you with us welcome back as we get going inside it's zebo and Cauley stein fox is out there with farrell and it's carter in at the three slot so that's the five in the game for sacramento Cauley stein a screen to the paint. Kuzma pulls. Pulls it in. Kuzma's got three rebounds now in this one. And here's Fry from the arc. Sacramento grabs the miss. And also got his fourth rebound in this one. And they hold a huge advantage on the back door. Greg, and that's been the key to this lead. I mean, they've really dominated the glass. Yeah, heads up aggressive play right there. Saw the smaller man on him and took it straight to the basket. Hart the pass to Dan. For three. And he's good on the three ball. The defense a step slow. And he you can see the result. Greg, that's three in a row from out there now, so they've got to do a better job contesting. Randolph kicks to Farrell. Feeds it to Cauley Stein. King's moving the ball around. Carter against Dan. And it's Carter missing. And he rushed that one, no doubt about it. The D. Allen's position, you could see the frustration on his face. Passes it to Hart. Back to Fry. Here's Kuzma. And another three for the Lakers. And you can see the play calling this half. Another one. from distance well they're dialed in locked and loaded from outside the arc it's all about the triple so far Carter kicks to Cauley Stein pass to Farrell the dish to Randolph great touch on the 16th And the Kings lead by four. And boy, did he ever sell the pump fake. Worked to absolute perfection. For those just joining us, fourth quarter here. We're just over two and a half minutes into it. Outside Thomas. The pass to Kuzma. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Sacramento leading by four. Fox kicks to Cauley Stein. Dishes it to Carter. The feed to Fox. Pass to Randall. That's another one for him. His fifth in just seven shots. I'm trying to get him to catch up. Like, 
I'm getting two shots in a row, so I've got one more two shot in a row for Lakers, and then it's just play for it. He might not elevate like some of the other guys on the court, but as we've learned, Randolph knows how to get the ball in the basket. Thomas, it's a wide open look, drills the three pointer. 12 straight points off of three pointers, and the D looks shell shocked. And guys, now that they're rolling from out there, the defense has to really get up into them. They've got to almost be in their jerseys to try to deny those looks. Now a timeout called by Sacramento. Some changes for Sacramento. Bogdanovich is checked in for Carter. And Heald subbed in for Yogi Ferrell. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Well, I was able to listen in on what Dave Yeager went over with his team. He told his guys they've got the green light to keep shooting from downtown. He told them, I like the way you guys are working out. There. Keep finding the open spaces on the perimeter. They're giving us open shots. We'll see if they step it up from here, guys. And Brooke Lopez, the bucket on the assist by Thomas. Thomas got four. This now tonight. Out of their last five makes, how about all five? Okay, I'm still not up there in now. Unless one of the ones I call is this corner. Hanging back and getting picked apart. Fox with it. Now, Thomas defending. And the three ball is good. And that's now nine points for Buddy Heal. Okay, we got a nice little back and forth going here. Yeah, and I like it. I love seeing that. It's a lot of fun when that happens. These teams are going at each other from the outside. Here's Lopez. Lopez missing again. That's one he knows he should have drained. Pauly Stein. Offensive rebound. Here's Randolph. And finally they hit one. Randolph's got six points in the quarter. Yeah, as a former rebounder myself, Kevin, I love the aggressiveness on the glass. Randolph is showing absolute determination grabbing those boards. Randall dishes to Ingram. Randall down low, working on Randall. Oh, and it looks like that's going to be a goaltending call. Yep, that's it. So they'll get the basket. Just barely too late and, and catches it on the way down. He's already in the air there, committed. So can't fault him for going for the block. Heel kicks to Fox. Coley Stein a screen. Healed with it. Shoots over Ingram. Again, healed missing. When he's got that kind of positioning, he's got to score it. Got to score the ball from there. Lopez sets a screen for Thomas. And the rejection by Coley Stein. Oh, here's healed. Tight defense on him. Kicks it to Randolph. And it's sent back by Lopez. And in transition, it's Ingram. Here we go. And he lays it up and in. And now just a one-point Sacramento lead. Nobody is catching Ingram in the open floor. I mean, this guy is a speed merchant. And there's the call. It's going to be an illegal screen. After a first half where he had just one turnover, fellas, things have changed in the second. They're starting to pile up on him now. For Los Angeles, they've gone 7 of 11 from the floor in the final quarter so far. Been some solid looks for them. Double team on Thomas. Picked by Randall. Fox against Thomas. Over Fox. Thomas, no good. 
Sacramento's gone 6 of 11 when they've taken the three-point shot tonight. Very respectable. Here's Cauley Stein. The shot, no good. Good D by Lopez. Here's Thomas. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. No, I tell you what, he earned his money on that foul. Yeah, if you're going to foul, then make sure that you don't give a chance for the and one. One drops. He ties it up. Sacramento making a switch here. Goofus is checked in. And that drops, so they now lead by one. You know, he's a steady hand at the free throw line, showing tremendous confidence in this one. Heel gets to Bogdanovich. Fox against Thomas. Rufus. Second shot opportunity. And, uh, oh, there's a whistle. He was going up for a layup. And while it looked like there was some contact, he wasn't sure they were going to call it a foul shot or not. But sure enough, they have. So he'll head to the free throw line. Balls checked in for Los Angeles. What's up? The free throw drops for Kufis. Here's Caldwell Pope. He feeds it to Randall. He dishes it to Lopez. Picked by Randall. Lopez, a screen on Fox. Ball, the pass to Lopez. Here's Randall. And the Lakers with another miss. Sacramento's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Now here's Heald. He's guarded by Caldwell Pope. Kufus kicks to Heald. King's moving the ball around. The turnaround jumper. Randolph can't hit. The Lakers trail. And here is Ingram. Kufus grabs the miss. Kufus has got rebound number 10 tonight with that last one. Fox dishes to Bogdanovich. He kicks it to Heal. Feeds to Randolph. Scores the bucket. He's 7 for 11 and continues to look good. And how about the grit and determination in the post? I mean, essential qualities to have late in a close game. Randall passes the ball. It's Ingram on the wing. He's covered by Bogdanovich. And it's Ingram missing. Sacramento leading by four. Pass to Fox. Randall grabs the board. Not a whole lot going down for him at this point. He just can't buy a break. And slam dunk by Ingram. And after playing one year at Duke, Ingram is used to providing big baskets for his club, just dominating with ease in these moments. Heel kicks to Randall. So he gets the whistle, contact on the way up, and two shots coming up. And I like the fact that the defense is looking to protect the rim at all costs. He definitely saved the layup with that foul, and he'll make him earn him from the line, and that's what you want to see.
Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. First one falls for him. Good on both. He's got ice water in his veins, fellas. No way he's going to miss from the line when the game's still hanging in the balance. I've seen him make too many in this situation. Ball dishes to Ingram. Picked by Randall. Fires from 14. A tad short, but it's good off the front iron. And it's seven points for Brook Lopez. Big scores like that one are what you can count on from Lopez. Poof is with it. He's picked up by Lopez. Heel kicks to Randall. Over Randall. And Randolph with the basket on the assist by Heel. Heel's got his fifth assist in this one. Lakers trail by four. There's a minute 34 left here in the fourth quarter. Here's Lopez. That shot no good. And the Kings going the other way. They led the game at one point by 20. Healed, can't hit. Rare you'll see him miss such an open look. Now, here's Ball. He's tightly guarded. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. That one is on heel. Good utilization of his height and speed to get to the line that time. Ball showing you he's got the savvy to draw contact. the first of two no good heartbreaking always got to keep an eye on the ball no <laughs> pun intended he's a guy that can do a little bit of everything a triple double threat every game so he comes up empty missing both Kings leading now by four. Fox kicks to Kufus. Now here's Heel. He's guarded closely. Looks for Randolph. Gets it to him. Count the basket. And every move he makes looks like the right one at this point. No doubt about it, Greg. I mean, the game comes so naturally to him easily. I mean, helping to expand their lead as they try to close this one out. He's doing it. Timeout called the Lakers. They trail by six. 50 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Zach Randolph. And his focus, guys, has been laser sharp. And his touch from the field, flawless. And the teammates have worked hard to get him the ball in some good positions. And boy, has he rewarded them with a spectacular shooting performance. Great call to keep running all those sets for him.
Orlando kicks to Caldwell Pope. Here's Lopez. Connects. And now they trail by just four. The big fella, Brooke Lopez, coming up with a gigantic fourth quarter score. And they go to the intentional foul. Forty-one seconds left to play here in the fourth. Now Fox. Randall passes to Fox. Randall brings the double team. Good ball movement here by the Kings. And it's Randolph slamming it down. Just terrific determination. First, compiling the lead and now building on it. And that's what you want to do. I mean, you can't let the opposition off the hook here. I mean, you've got to keep adding to that lead. I won't do the replay because it's always good. Maybe just it live and go back and watch it on the actual video I'm doing. That's like fucking a great slam that was a random punishment. So that's what I'm trying to say. Los Angeles calls timeout. They're behind by six. We've got 22 seconds left to play here in the fourth. Guys, your thoughts? And they still got a little time to play with, so a three and a quick foul make things interesting. Yeah, but they need some help. They're going to need some help any way you look at it. I mean, they're hoping for some missed free throws at the other end. We've got 22 seconds left to play here in the fourth. Here's Ball. Money! And now they trail by just four. Absolutely no fear in this young fella. When the game is close, you want the ball in Ball's hands. That's right. No other option but to foul and hope for some misses. Yeah, they have to extend the game. I mean, plain and simple. Use every second you can on the clock here. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. He hits the first one, and that puts them up by five. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a six-point ball game. Perfectly done at the strike there. That brings their lead up to an even more comfortable level. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touched by Randall. Here's Fox, and he commits the intentional foul. Shooting the Sacramento, De'Aaron Fox. Taking two shots. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. First free throw is good, and that makes it a seven-point lead. And so he drops them both. It's an eight-point game. Pass to Fry, and it's Dang in the corner. From outside, off the mark. 
Now, here's Fox. So the Kings win it. Some good moments throughout this one, but they had the clear advantage down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the way they executed on both ends of the floor, completely under control for the vast majority of the game. And whenever there was a misstep, they just didn't allow it to fester. And that's why they're going to walk away with the win. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin, with Zach Randolph. Zebo, what was the biggest difference tonight? We just came out, we was more physical this game. We came out with uh, being aggressive, and that's what we had to do. We got stops and being aggressive, and, you know, everybody contributed tonight. It was a team win. Physical is who you guys are, Zach. Thanks. Kevin, back to you. All right, David, thank you. And that about does it for the first game of the new NBA season. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. So long and good night, everyone. Well, let's have a quick look at the stats. Um, I'll try to make up for once overall not shooting as well as what he did in my practice game. To set up things, um, Lopez is pretty good. Four of eight, um, so that's right. He actually ended up three of eleven. Um, so it's all right without me kind of doing that much. I think I let him get one three point. I'm unsure about that. Um, um, so it needs to be better for two. So we take that off. It's one of six two pointers. So I'll just analyze that more, which is what you need to do to get them all working well. <coughs> Sorry, I got the hiccups. Um, basically, I'll go the ones I ball. And that's kind of my nice, sad. I've got, got to this, it's better. So he's got one, two, two of five, three corners, and. He's missed one inside, which he shouldn't miss. And he's not been good from like short mid range and inside as well. And he's only got one of five there and none of one inside. So I'll make him 99 for, um, I think, for a um, uh, layout. I hope so, I don't care how good he is, he needs to get his field goal percentage, but maybe I'll just use the one, the two point, it, two point sort of set up for um, the one that I've done in the other league. I've done the four games for like Lakers as well as all the other teams and played them kind of or watched them or simmed them by watching them to set up the actual GM league. GM my league. Okay, so Isaiah Thomas was six of fifteen. But if you got seven of fifteen like that, it's pretty good. Four of six, four of five. Christmas, three of six. J Hart's five of five, so he's quite in. One hundred percent. Um Randall's five of ten. Little Dings one of three. So, um, yeah, it's been hard. It's all about Brandon Ingram. And one of six, Shannon Fry. Shannon Fry. It's a bit complicated at the moment. Um, he's better at threes, I think, so. Yeah, this is a bit difficult to work out exactly what. I need, I need to kind of do, um... So, I'll just do, like, if you got one more, so that's two of seven, so... It's still a bit bad. If you got one more of three, that'd be two of six, so it's not right. <coughs> So, the field goals, two of seven, so... Yeah, that's too low on field goal percentage, so I'll do Shannon Fry again. Let's try and get the Shannon Fry from the
from my seasoning. And obviously it wants it to ball two point setup. And that'll probably work that. Whatever's to do there, they're one of three, so that can be two or four, so it's alright on that as well. So so here we go, Zach Randolph. So I got the gaps ten or fourteen, all the signs seven or thirteen, three or ten, D Fox. But that could be four or eleven, which is kinda alright. Bogdanovich four or not. Proof is five or seven. Roll four or ten. Yeah. So I'm happy with that, except Fox kinda. Fox look up his actual stats as a rookie for the real thing. Um, that's all for today. <coughs> I think for the NBA, I'll just kinda try and get out and see if there's any music. Menu music order is this menu music I'll try and turn it off quickly. So it's for me to actually um, turn it off like there's no menu music. So it's good. Um, I just want to have a look at team sets. See the differential, so Warriors have got 20 points <laughs> differential, <coughs> but I mean, so I'm trying to get that to maybe 10 or 5, <coughs> or something like that. Um, Cavaliers have got 15, so Warriors are better, Cavaliers are better. <coughs> so it's been like that. And um, Bulls somehow got a 14 point differential. Trailblazers 13, Raptors 12, Griffiths 11, Thunder 11, <coughs> Kings 8, Wizards 8, Mavericks 7, Celtics 6, Knicks 2 <coughs> points, and then the rest haven't played at the moment. And I'll just go to who's bad, so Suns are <coughs> bad defensively. Um, kind of, but they're not kind of, oh, they can't. <coughs> Well, no, with the under four, they're kind of defensively and offensively. Kind of them. So it's a bit better. And um, the Hawks are very defensively and on the offensively as well. <coughs> Seven sixes are good defensively but bad offensively. So that needs to be worked out. <coughs> Magic are good. Um, defensively and kind of average, <coughs> kind of de offensively, or bad offensively, kind of. Um, Rock Rockets are bad offensively at the moment, and good defensively. But I said, um, I'm trying to update all these. What I was doing was trying to play them without actually doing the edit first. So I'm trying to actually do the edit at the moment. Um, Pistons kind of right, getting back to more close to kind of game. Spurs good defensively, not offensively. Nuggets good defensively, not offensively. Pacers bad defensively, good offensively. So there's actually one team like that. I don't know how this translates to the actual um, NBA, but they only had one game, so it's like that. Lakers. Um, <coughs> I kind of average, kind of, um, in their defense and offense, but it's not that much margin, so it's alright. They're bad defensively, and Minnesota are good defensively, and Nets had them like a 105 8, so it's bad defensively and good offensively. And the Hornets, uh, like they were 105 8, not those scores, and just went double over time. And I don't want any noise, so they're bad offensively, good defensively. 
but it just can differ so much, so, um, so I need to kind of work out, kind of, so I need to get these kind of close to these games, especially like that, so I'll try and go just to, to rank that kind of, so I'll rank like the, the middle of the road kind of teams. Um, so it's about 11 the average difference at the moment so I'll try and get that better and about average points per game That's 26, so it should be 38, 14. So it's about 92, 93. So I'm not worried about that at the moment, but um, I'm trying to get more like they actually get get more of the same points per game within 10, kind of, or 15, like the real thing. And um, it's about 93, the average against. So that's average four, and that's average in this as well. Kind of the same three. That's not the best way to work it. <coughs> uh, the average one just fell apart. Like and um, yes, yeah, so, <coughs> so that's all at the moment. And I was being like, who's on top of Warriors from top? And kept <coughs> That was the third, as this box had a good game, so, so that's interesting, and, um, yeah, I'll look for the next game coming up tomorrow, and I'll be Grizzlies versus Jazz, and that's most of the first couple of games that have been done, and, um, yeah, so that's good. I'm just talking about they don't actually do the games, um, all, the, all the actual games um, in sequence, so there might be some less games than, than others. <coughs> so I'm going to just go on the total um, percentage and um, just add them a win and go on there, on there, so I'll add a win, so it could be one and one, <coughs> and I'll add a win, and you'd be like to be, like on your, um, points for and against, so you'll be two and one, so if you win both of yours, you'll be three and oh, if you're two, two and oh, so we're going to have some two and oh, or one and one, or oh and two teams, so it's an oh and two teams, so it doesn't matter. But I'll basically, basically add a win kind of it. Um, maybe, but um, yeah, I don't know what to work out for on two, but um, I'll just work out on actual the point differential whether it should win or not for that. And actually, I can maybe look ahead to the scheduled game for their th third game and just go on the ladder, like how they should actually win, whether they should win or not. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'll look, look ahead to the actual schedule to the game and just go on whether they should win or not and just have their point differential the same and I'll have it a win or a loss. So obviously if you're 0-2 and they're better, then you're probably going to be 0-3. But it's kind of good if you're 2-0, oh, then you'll probably be 3-0. And, oh. and that's the best thing I can do because there'll be some game's kind of quite done for the, for the three, and it's just like some seasons will help you, but some seasons it won't, kind of, so, so, and like that's the best thing to do. Okay, okay um, I'm signing out for the moment, um, I just want to stay up all the time at the moment and get this into the, the second week of the playoffs, um, we're already nearly through week one, 
Um, I'll just go to how many games it's been. Um, we've done in like just hardly any time. Look, it's like there's one, one, two. Yeah, so there's there's only two more games left in week one. Uh, so we're nearly done week one, two more games and we've done it. <coughs> It'll go on to week two before we do the two games though. So um as I said like we're nearly done so basically we've done thirteen games already and we've only got um 45 to do, so we're kind of nearly a quarter of the way through the season at the moment in two days. So anyway, um, I'll just look at the stats and league leaders. Like Anti Mopo had a 48 point per game um, um, actual game, and you'd be like, "How's that happen?" So they're try trying to sim like they have a big game. And like in my kind of sim, we got like 30 points, or between 25 and 30 points for anti Mopo. And obviously it's going to be more because there's only th three games, but he hardly had any breakout games in that. They're just trying to sim that. So I'm leaving kind of how he is. And Kerry Irving's kind of the same as well. DeRozan's kind of right. He's about 30 points per game, and he's kind of that in the real thing, or he was last year. Kemba Walker is kind of being better. Um, I've, and like he's 23 there, 23 points per game. So maybe I need to stuff around with him, but I'm just tr I'm trying to get him to be maybe 28 points. And he's just getting more points per game, but he is, he's just progressed him better. Um, Blake Griffin's 31, Fasingas is 28, um, John Wall's 26. Um, Joel in 25, and like this is when they've done their better games, so if they do a bad game, it'll bring them back into um, kind of how they should, should be. Um, D'Angelo Russell's 25, somehow. And that's not maybe right, but um, he's kind of right. His threes need to be maybe better, but he's gone that good anyway. I couldn't be bothered to worry about that. And it's been inconsistent threes anyway. Um, Andre Drummond, 25 points, so he's going better. Um, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, 25, so that's good. Um, like, a lot of these, these are like the first week, and it's like on the actual um, ratings for the um, what they got in the game, and I haven't actually made it better yet. So he's only 24, so he should be more. Um, James Harden, so I'm trying to make him more, um, yeah, it's in Schroeder, I'll just look like, oh, it's like about five ball, so he, that's what it should be after three weeks, um, he's 18, and he's getting more points per game in this game, but may go back to 18 points, and he needs maybe more field goal percentage, but said, um, it's kind of right at the moment, so I'll try and do that better if I need to. And it'll be like, why do I care about him for when he's only 40% field goal percentage? But said, um, if his three, threes were better, then he'd be good, so you need to do the true shooting percentage. And basically, basically you work that out with, um, with the, with like this. So they field goals made from 20 attempts, but one of them was a three-pointer. So that should be really eight and a half. Um, oh, oh, hang on. So one was a three-pointer, so that should be nine um, field goals made, but it's not. So it's eight and a half field goals made from that stuff. So eight and a half from from 20. Because he got a three pointer, which is like one more point. And six or six free throws. <coughs> so that's basically 
um, three shots attempted with a with a six free throws attempted. So that's twenty three. And that's an extra three, so it'll be eleven and a half of twenty three. So I'll just quickly work that out. And this is like the true shooting percentage for them. And like how I do the true shooting percentage. So eleven and a half, how many twenty threes? And it's actually fifty percent. I should have worked that out kinda of quicker. But I didn't. Um, yeah, so he's actually got fifty percent um true shooting percentage and not actually um how it is. And this is why it's okay. So if you've got a, a center or a power forward that doesn't shoot threes, three is getting fifty percent <coughs> like field goal percentage or around that, then they're just as good and get less maybe points per game. So that's how it works out. If they're shoot, shooting more free throws, then it's kind of right for the and stuff, but they may get less points per game. I don't know. But said, um, yeah. So, so that's how it kind of works out. But said, if you get more field goal percentage, it'll be good, and yeah, therefore you get more true shooting percentage. How I do it. But said, um, so basically, with with them hitting, hitting high percentage three pointers that makes it and shooting three pointers and high percentage that makes them get two points each time they have a shot more often and if they miss a two, two pointer will they get an extra half one if they hit a three pointer and that's how I try to assess it and like if they get more free throws well that's like a shot and like really shooting at that percentage for that and they should be a higher field goal percentage then. So, so basically, he should be 50% for for his true shoot percentage for what I'm doing for Dennis Schroeder. And like, for instance, I'll go to Carl Anthony Towns. And look, he, he's shooting threes. That's all. I'll try and get one not shooting threes. I'll go here with Jay Henson. Well, he doesn't shoot. So he's got 0.643. So that's right at the moment. And look, he's 9 of 14. And he's only had 1 or 2 free throws. So it's about um, um, 9 and a half, 15. Oops. So I'll just do that, 9 and a half, 15. And look, he's 0.633 then. But said, um... Yeah, so basically what he's shooting there is 0.633. But said it was 0.515 there, so they'll basically be kind of what he is anyway. And he's kind of only getting 6.8 points per game, but if he got 19 points per game, so it's a it's like the like Dennis Schroeder actually matters then, even though he's only shooting 0.400% because he's nearly the same as a low... Like, like a 50% non three point shooting, um, low free throw getting center. And like that's like they usually score maybe um, uh, more like 10 points rather than 20 points as well. So it's just kind of to work that out. And what I'd like to do is get his points per game and then get his percentage above the, the average true shooting percentage. And get that as a as a step, and it needs to be like how how he's improving the team. So it's either get the worst true shooting percentage, or like the average one. And then I think to have the average one is what I kind of think. And then just see how how he affects the team, kind of like like that. So he's like. Like maybe just making it average the team, but, but said if you had like the backup one playing, um, he may get higher field goal percentage, but he may get less points for team. So it's assessing that kind of, and if another the other players are having more points per game, then maybe them they may shoot less field goal percentage anyway. But I 
I haven't got that worked out in the game yet, but said that that's kind of what happens, I think. But said, um, yeah, I have to work out all these intricacies and get them worked out. And um, basically, if, we've got, if you're worried you want to have these hot shots like an NBA lot live, the, like, I'll just go to it if I can and I'll show you which ones they are. So um, that's not going to do it that kind of. I just want to do, yes, yeah, so I'm doing this. Uh, yeah, so I've got all the different things here. I just want to go to the PR quickly and see what has happened with that. So basically, Attic, um, Mopo, Persingas, Munro, Meek, somehow. And then bit. Mm. So I've still got to work things out, but um, yeah, it's just been like that at the moment. Um, Uh, where are we going? So I've got points per game, I think per whatever it is, per 30, 44 minutes. So 48, so that must be, must be per 40, 44 minutes or something like that. I don't know, so I'll see if he's here. Like, I've got Isaiah Taylor there. So he's 16 points from how many minutes? From 30 minutes. So he's 16 points from 30 minutes. <coughs> I said, obviously, Isaiah Taylor will be maybe good in there, and you th think he's going to get high points per game and everything like that, and he's going to get 60% field goal percentage, and et cetera, et cetera. But I said, um, what needs to happen is him to not be as much points per game. So, basically, we need to be like if he's going to start and actually starts to start then to get his points per game. It's a bit like Gattaca. He's getting the 16 points per game. He's playing that much better like that. Like he's only going to play kind of however many minutes it is, like 30 minutes. He knows he's only going to play 30 minutes and plays like that better instead of playing over 30 minutes. So I need to work out that properly, like the differences of that. And like he's the main one at the moment, like there are other ones that could there, so I can just assess, like, I'll go one ahead to be nice to him and just assess his points per game per per minute, so he's getting 40 points per game per minute per minute, and to Makoko, I said I want to be like what he usually should get. So I'll go back to the season before, and he's 22.9 from 35.6. So it's more like how it should be. And I've just done that and go to its normal season the year before. So he should be relieved to get about 22.9 and 35.6. And like, I'll just go to Persingas because he's also there. So 20. Yeah, so he's got 28 points in 28 minutes, maybe him. But it's more like 80 point, 80 more, 23 minutes. So <coughs> more like 80.1, it should be in 32.8. So to get his points per game like that, somehow, to, so it's basically, so I'll go the one below, one above. So it's 18 points, and it's 22. So it should be about 20 points per game and stuff. And, um, and stuff and not really and like I just go like that and it's as good as anything to do <coughs> and um he's getting very high field goal percentage so I may need to get that more like how it should be too if it was actually going to start and I think that they've only played one game so they'll even out eventually I said um yeah so it should be like 48% and 0.480 and like getting 22 points a game, kind of. And like, um, as the season goes on, I'll be able to do that better, kind of. I said, um, yeah. And Levert might be the same. Look, he's only getting 17 points. So I'll try and do this. And so if they're actually are starting, to try and get them more, how, how they should actually be, but they need to have more games. Anyway, I've had a bit of talk on here. And um, I've gone through kind of all that.
And um, I'll just go to who's maybe going to be good the MVP. So it's got that. Yeah, so it's not had enough. Kind of weak shit. Listen, we've got play the wicked anti Kamupo for the Eastern Conference and come out for the Western Conference to see what they're getting. And um, I can't wait to the actual players of the, of the um, for the MVP at the moment. So it's only been caught the first week, so I won't predict that at the moment. We'll say who's lead that. So, so I'm just exiting now, so I'll turn this off because of music.